say, Brian, turn my mic up. It's good to be back. Yo, Eli. Yo, Eli. It's good to be back here. Late Night Parents. Best ways to follow the show, LateNightParents.com. I'm Ted Hicks, and I am across none other than Richard Valdez. Teddy Ted. How What's going doing? on? What's how going on? What's... No, better yet, how are you doing? Uh, I mean, I know last week you were like barely able to move, <laughs> coughing, <laughs> hacking, laid up, and being so considerate and not passing the cooties along to me. I know. <laughs> well, wasn't that great of me? Oh, man, my goodness. Before we even talk about the sickness, big announcement. Drum roll. Drum roll, please. <laughs> I wanted to announce that our little show will be coming to an end. It's going to be a big show? <laughs> <laughs> we'll be coming to an end January 2020. So we're going to start our retirement and we're going to, you know, start to have the best of shows. The best of shows and everything. Everyone can come by and give us gifts. January of 2020. Oh. January of 2020. But why? I don't know, because Mike Francesa did it, got all those great gifts, and now he's <laughs> back on WFAN. Got it. Okay. So I thought we would give it a try. We'll start the song, playing Old Lang Syne now, playing We Are the Champions. Something. Uh, we'll get everything going. Something. Have all our guest hosts and... Ask friends come and visit us. Come by, showers with gifts, um, love, all the above. Okay. We do take money, money orders, <laughs> certified bank checks. Um, Rich, I was sick as a dog. There we go. Here we go. Ah, there we go. Us. Cut it, cut it. Well. We only have 10 seconds. That's right. We ten only seconds. have 10 seconds. Ten seconds. Oh, my God. Then cut a check. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Brian. Um, Yeah, it was a little under weather, Rich. I think you were more than a little under the weather. Was down for the count. Woo. Did not pass it on to you, Rich. Nope. Made sure any of our interactions at work, I was like, stay downstairs. Yes, you were. Yes, you did. And you're like, no, oh, I could bring it up. So I'm like, no. no. <laughs> Stay down there. Stay Please. away. But um, as we said before at the onset of the show, best ways to follow the show, latenightparents.com. You can go to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, uh, listen to or archive a podcast. And I want to give a big shout out to 1240 AM WGBB. Home station. And our number one affiliate, WRAQ 92.7 FM in Angelica, New York. What's up, WRAQ? <laughs> I wonder if they go by the rack. I don't know. You know, it just it would, it would sound good. It would. It would. Let us know. And big shout out to our 20 affiliates across the nation. In our little hybrid world of terrestrial and internet radio, and hey, we want to put your show on this website, and yep, so we can spew our venom across the world. We spew no venom. We just call the truth as we see it. Rich, a couple of things we won't be talking about tonight. Okay, what won't we talk about? White House correspondence dinner. Okay, big news. No, okay, the NFL draft. Yeah, not worried about that. <laughs> LeBron James. LeBron James. And the never ending debate of is he the best ever? And we won't talk about Earth Day. Okay. Now well, we can talk about Earth Day. Yeah. Um what I will you were trying to turn me on to the show mm -hmm. about a year ago. Okay. Okay. Uh, and a few others at work were trying to turn me on to but and I finally took the time out. And watched it. All ten episodes. Ah, uh, could this be Westworld? Westworld. We finally caught up with Westworld. We finally caught up with Westworld. In time for season two. And your thoughts? 
Excellent show. I, I told you. Wish I would have watched it. Yep. A year ago. Yep. Awesome show. The acting is great. Uh, Thandie Newton's my girl. I mean, she is just playing the heck out of this role. Right. Uh, but everyone, it uh, all, all around. You know the. Um, now, do you remember the movie which this is well, you know, a little more than loosely based on? But the movie from the seventies with Yul Brenner, Westworld. That's where this comes from. That's ah. actually it really was Michael Crichton book. But uh, uh movie maybe seventy five, seventy six maybe, called Westworld, robots in a same basic premise. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not on Netflix. Mm. Check it out. It was it was actually a pretty decent movie for its time as well, but that's where they get the entire pr- idea from. I always associated Westworld with Waterworld. With Waterworld, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> thank goodness, no. <laughs> I kept thinking it was that, and I was like, oh, no, that movie was horrible. Right, right. No, no, nothing at all to do with that. No, Westworld was its own franchise from the 70s. Any expectations for this new season? Um, I mean, so have you seen any of the episodes yet? I saw the first episode. You've seen the first one, alright. I have not seen any of season two yet. I mean, of course, there's, there are questions to be answered. As I hear season, uh, the first episode answers questions, creates all new questions. You know, I, I hear that we, we will be introduced to a whole other breed of androids, whatever okay. we shall call them. Um, and we got to find out more about certain people. But you've seen it. I haven't. No spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. No, but I would say Bernard, Andrew. Yes. I mean, Bernard. Arnold. Yes. Bernard. Bernard. Ar- Arnold. Um, awesome. Yeah. I mean, everyone is really playing the heck out of those roles. Yeah. Acting is top shelf. No, it really is. It really is. Um, I guess my first tech question I have for you. Did you set up your Amazon in-car delivery yet? <laughs> We're giving our lives away to this to, to this. Give them the keys to my house, access to my vehicle to get to me. No, I've set up no Amazon in-car deliveries. No. We've allowed this one company yep. to become, to know everything about us. We've put microphones in our homes. Yep. Yep. So they can constantly listen just in case we say, all right, let's make it happen. Alexa, what time is it? Ah, you just did it. I just did it. You just did it. I, I, but that was all right. That was fine. But, hey, I got a question. Um, do you think it's kind of creepy with the Amazon show or with the drop-ins, the drop-in feature? It's just listening to everything? Well, no, being able to just drop it on someone. Yeah, that is more than creepy. <laughs> no, let's have some privacy. I'm sorry. I'm still of that generation of I believe in privacy. Right. Not not just, okay, let's see what someone's doing. Oh, hi. How? No, no, no. Don't just drop in. No. I don't know. I mean, uh, I mean it's, it's... I'm at a loss for words for this because... The in-car delivery. I, I don't even know what to say to that. First of all, what do you need that badly? I don't know. <laughs> I was going to make a joke. What, you could have a quick toilet paper delivery or something like that to the car? Maybe. I mean, a water delivery. Uh, you can't get out of the car and go into the store? No. This is just going too far. This is society now. Yeah. And we can't even yeah. blame the millennials either. No, we have to blame those who raised them, the millennials yes. and created the millennials. So would we be <laughs> blaming ourselves? Um, that would be the next generation. No, wait, oh, wait, that might be yours. So, yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. And I, I can't see. Yeah, I don't need anything that badly. I mean, so let's say you have a subscription with OnStar. Yep. How does that come into play? What because, do you mean? because if you have a subscription with OnStar mm-hmm. and you set up the Amazon in-car delivery, mm-hmm. how does OnStar not think that your car is getting broken into? They have to 
unlock the door properly. So how? See, I don't even know. So how is the Amazon delivery going to access your vehicle? You know, I I think I, I've got to do a little bit more homework on that. It's, it's you know, um, unless so, it's got to be either you leave your car unlocked, which we're New Yorkers. That that thought is insane to us. Of course. To folks in the mid in much of the Midwest Did and not? not the metropolitan areas, not nearly as much. You would be surprised how many people leave their keys in their car because they're too lazy to just take the keys out of the car. Wow. And so that in the morning they have to, you know, find them and start the car. You'd be surprised. You'd be even more surprised how many people just don't lock their doors because oh it's too much of a hassle to lock my car door. Do people in the Midwest or And that's in New York. I will say this much. Do people anywhere outside the tri-state, like, still leave their front doors unlocked? Yes. There are people in the tri-state that leave their doors unlocked. Mm. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy for you that you probably do live in an area that is that, that you believe is that safe and secure right. where you can leave your door unlocked, you know, in, especially in the tri-state. Good, good for you. That's great. Okay. Um, I'm glad you do live in a safe neighborhood. That's something to, something to be proud of. There's no way in heck I'm leaving my door unlocked. Mm-mm. No, no way, no how. I don't, and I don't care if it's because you have, you know, five dogs that are trained that if anyone walks in the door, they become lunch meat. No, unlock your door. Take your keys out of your car. Lock your car doors. Lock your house. Okay. You've just made yourself that much safer. I agree with you. I totally do. And this is Late Night Parents with Richard Valdez, Ted Hicks. Brian is our engineer, and ways to follow the show is LateNightParents.com. Um, as we segue from that, any thoughts on the impending merger between T-Mobile and Sprint? We've been hearing about this as being a potential merger for how many? It's like two years now, has it been? Something like at that? At least. At least. Um, I mean, I, I tend to think that the more companies, the better competition, the better it is for the right. consumer. So this will just become, in in this case, it might not really be a detriment, that much of a detriment to the consumer because it still will be them versus AT&T, Verizon, the big guys. So, But we go from four to three. We go from four to three. I think competition is key. Yeah, it is. It is. But let's see what happens. Um, You know. Either way, I don't see where it, it, it might not be great for some of the the existing customers of either of those companies. Okay. They, you know, you hope not, but they may end up seeing some increases. But uh, overall, I don't think it will be too bad of an issue. Of those two companies, their most of their user base, where is it highly concentrated? Is it like Midwest? Is I don't know. West? I don't know, but I, th- you know, you gotta, you, you want to, you never want to assume something, right? But considering that their strongest uh, signals, their highest coverage areas were major metropolitan areas okay. before they expanded, you know, going back again a couple of years as they've grown to be able to claim numbers, um, you just got to figure that their, their, their main customer bases are in the major metropolitan areas where they've always had coverage and where they've been able to get people from the beginning. Now, do, is there more about that that I don't know? Do you know? Mm, I do not know, but I just wanted to know, like, I, I was also thinking, is T-Mobile more for the urban users or the, the, the younger That's how they population? sell themselves. They do. They do. That's how they sell themselves. Um, but, you know, how do you say that a, a service, a communication service is, you know, for younger, for older, it's, let me make my phone calls, let me get my data. Right. And, you know do what you need to do hmm. uh, but yeah they do sell themselves as a, a younger generation option kind of like hey you know your data caps aren't as hard right right i mean i think going back many many years ago t-mobile was the first company that i can remember that had the rollover yes i think you're right so eh, okay we'll see I, I i like i said still a big fan of competition yep um I don't, I'm not a, 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 a subscriber of T-Mobile or Sprint. Uh, me neither. Um, I use Sprint maybe 18 
19 years ago. Oh, okay. Well, we did. We 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 were a Sprint customer at work for a while when it was Nextel. I remember Sprint yeah, that's true. that's true. So when Nextel got brought out by Sprint, we were a Sprint customer at work for a while. But we never really, I know at least I didn't really mm-hmm. use the phone piece of that much. That was more when we still needed and used the uh, old Nextel Direct Connect, which became Sprint Net, you know, Direct Connect. Um, now, I've never been uh, a customer of either. My goddaughter is actually a T-Mobile employee. And, you know, I told her recently about, you know, just phone prices going off the, off the, off the chain. And she's like, well, you know, we'll team up. We'll, we'll pick up your existing fees and we'll find out if maybe they'll pick up some of your phone fees that are out there for you know, for expenses you have out there and can save you some money. That's the bottom line. But for me, it's all about this level of service. I've always been willing. And, yeah, I mean, we're, we're naming names here. So I've been a Verizon customer for, geez, probably 15 years or more. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely more. Closer to 20. Um and I know I pay a premium, but okay. I pay a premium for the service. It's I will pick up that phone, start start calling someone. The call is going to go through, no right. matter where I am. Except, well, as with any carrier, you have known dead spots, and those tend not to be the fault of the carrier. Those tend to be because the people who live in the area don't want an antenna in their area, a la the North Shore of Long Island. Um, but otherwise. It's going to work no matter where you are. And I don't worry about roaming because it's Verizon across the freaking country. So do whatever I want, anywhere right. I want. So, yeah, I pay a little more for that. The, the one thing I can remember about Verizon, and I know we're, we're veering off a little bit, is I'm on a commuter train. Mm-hmm. I'm heading into a tunnel. Yep. And the call still doesn't drop. Right, yes. My current provider... No can do. No can do. Painful. Yeah. yeah. Painful. Yeah, I've done those. I've had those calls, like you say, from outside, from just getting into Penn Station, mm-hmm. start the call, get into the train, go through the tunnel, come out in Queens, all the way out to Long Island. Right. And sometimes we'll even survive the call through those dead spots, which mm-hmm. are known. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what you pay for. Hmm. We shall see. A uh, bunch of good things about 5G. Everyone's talking about 5G. Speed. Speed. Lack of physical cables. Yep. Mm. Do, you think I, th- th- do you think this will be the one that drives um, people from not even worrying about providing their own wireless in their home if, if they're in a 5G area and just... Writing everything off of public, if you will. Nah. Damn, I don't think so either. I, 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 can't, <laughs> I can't think that. I can't think that yet. Not. I mean, I still say still too soon. Right. Okay. Still too soon. Um, could we could we go that route at six or seven G? Maybe. Yeah. But I think that's a push. To be in your house, and you're just going off the public. Well, I mean, you've, you're, you've got a, an account. You still have to subscribe to it to something right. to get it. So I, I think some folks will do it. Those, you know, because again, we are of, we still think of, and at least I do, my home computer, mm-hmm. like the commercial computer. What's a computer? My home computer, my home desktop system, running everything it runs and doing everything I do with it. Uh, plus, of course, you have your mobile devices, you know, from phones to iPads, things like that. But, you know, if you were just a person that just has a, we'll say two devices, has your phone, using the term loosely, and um, your your laptop, we'll say, and okay. 5G provides the speed you need, why do you need a home network? I think I would just need to see it. Right. Oh, yeah. I, I, I agree. Um, you know, the good things about it are, as we've seen this article from Intel, um, you know, this is data, something that can keep up with all the data that's being thrown around. I mean, right. you know, we've been looking at it for years and years, how many devices are being added, you know, where the old addressing and back addressing system had to be updated to mm-hmm. allow for, for more. Because I easily remember the days where they said, oh, yeah, we have enough addresses for devices. No, there's more than we'll ever need. 
and right. those addresses are running out. So, you know, IPv6 is out there. So we have more addresses to assign to devices. Um, but, you know, you now you look at cars, especially vehicles on the road. Everything's connected. Everything's connected. So much more is going to be connected or will have multiple connections. You know, trucks, things like that have been connected for, for years. But now where you have the vehicles that are, you know, a la Tesla and everything that's coming up mm -hmm. that are getting, you know, over-the-air updates, over-the-air communications, autonomous driving with its constant data going back and forth. The more vehicles you get on the road, that's more data that's going to have to be accounted for and safely transmitted and received and processed. So, uh, you know, 5G coming out will definitely help those lines. Have you run into any problems with over-the-air over the updates in your automobile? My car is not new enough to get all over-the-air updates. Okay. It, it sends, um, a, a, like, a monthly update. Okay. But uh, I don't get nothing for CPU updates or, or rather application updates or OS updates in it. I don't know, but I think it was... Friday or Saturday, my console on my car mm -hmm. went dark. Really? It booted up, mm -hmm. went dark, so I could see nothing on the console at all, meaning um, not the overhead console. Just right. Not the not the uh, instrumentation, right. but the, the entertainment infotainment. It, it, right. Okay. Right. For navigation. Right. right. Totally went dark. So shut mm -hmm. it down, mm -hmm. turn it back on, mm -hmm. it flashed, okay. and then went dark again. Waited as I'm driving, as I needed directions for X, Y, Z, and I'm going through my phone, it just popped on. Popped on. And it just had me thinking, had to be an update in the queue? Should be a, be a, be a way to find out. Right. Or something's getting ready to fail. Or that. But now when it came back up, no messages? No. Good or bad? No. Just started working. Just started working. That, that does sound like an update. I want, Do you know if the Jeep... It's all you. You have navigation. Do you know if it is you know downloaded to your car or if it's constantly updating over the air? It's constantly mapping? updating over the air. I do know that. There is a card... Mm. There is a card. Does it hold the maps? I believe so. So that would get updated. So it's possible that yeah. that's what it was. But I just thought that was weird. Yeah, that is. And as you tie it in, as you know, 5G becomes the new norm, mm -hmm. you should see less and less of that. Right. Or it'll happen that much more quickly. Right. And normally, though, they try to time updates, things like that, when the car is not in use because the car is on the battery's mm -hmm, in there mm -hmm. it, it'll still communicate so um, yeah there should be a way for you to find out yeah. do you have a console that you can log into or go online and look at the health status of your vehicle and uh, I like do um, I just have it got it just have it uh, I guess the part of the show really don't want to get to we'll quickly address I'll say the name Bill Cosby. Uh, you know, formerly America's dad. Formerly America's dad, now convicted felon. Yeah. Three different sexual assault uh, convictions. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Ten years? I Ten believe. years apiece. Ten years each. So if I don't know if we'll ever really, really truly know how much is truth and i'm not at all in any way shape or form saying that the women are lying or right. telling the truth except of course when allegedly we've had one of the women who initially complained come out and say in her own book that well she may have exaggerated a little bit of, or uh, stretched some of that truth i don't know off the top of my head that person was also uh, involved or one of the people who who won the case i don't think she was because we would have really heard about it there. I believe Gloria Allred defended several. Okay. And the the way the case was set up, mm -hmm. second go around, where multiple people that were, you know, that had that deed right done to them, right, 
were able to t- testify. I mean, yeah. it's different generations. You know, it's 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 wrong. I'm not even coming out and saying oh, yeah, anything totally. in defense or all that because uh, there's nothing to defend. If if he's guilty of 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 these acts and these these things, then guilty as charged and should pay the price. You know, what do you, what do you say? What do you do? But you also think that we should see some of those other big names that, especially a year ago, that everyone was getting called out. Uh, we should see some other people going to going to trial as well. I think this is just a start. It, it should be. I think this is just a start. And me too. Yep. You know, for. For that specific group, yep. Um, you know, it, like like as I said before, just to start, uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see who's next in the queue, because that's when it becomes actually real. You know, that's the, when it gets real. The accusations are one thing, right? Convictions are a totally other story. Yeah. Oh yeah. Dude, yeah, you know, and I think you know with a lot of people, you know, they have a hard time with thinking about Bill Cosby in that way, right? Right. Because you know we grew up with him on TV for years. I for mean, years, you know, he's going back to you know Fat Albert and the Cosby Kids <laughs> and I Spy, right? And, you know, groundbreaking, and of course, you know, Huxtable being Cliff Huxtable. Um, and and the comedian and, and all that that the he activist did. and the activist correct, you know you don't want to believe these things to be true, but, uh, but it sounds like it was right. So, Mr. Crosby, you got to do your time right. And I was saying to my wife that, like, you know what, he's going to jail for the rest of his life. Probably, yeah. This eighty. Eighty exactly. Uh. Segue from there. This is Late Night Parents. Uh, ways to follow the show. Go to latenightparents.com. Rich Gmail revamped. I'm going to have to throw one at you here because I heard about it, didn't look into it, and haven't really looked for it. So tell me about the revamping. What 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 feature have they added to our inbox or will they be adding to our inbox? Well, there's going to be several features added. Okay. Uh, we're going to push out a blog sometime this week the one i really want to talk about is as you go into your inbox and, and you can see through you know the, the past couple of years the categories right yes you know um but one main feature is let's say you and i or you myself and brian mm-hmm. have been conversing in a message okay got a conversation so, there, so there's there's a thread yes within those 10 messages Within one of those messages, there was an attachment. Okay. Usually an MP3 file. Yep. Saying, hey, we're not going to be here this week, <laughs> weekend. But play this. But play this. Yes. But guess what? Brian can't find it because there's 10 different messages. Yes. That's going back and forth. Now the new feature, the attachment, will be at the onset. Oh, okay. So you won't have to drill through nine Each different message messages. Each message to find it. Okay. You go to it, it's going to be boom. They'll put, all, they'll right put attachments at the top of the conversations. Right. Oh, all right, that sounds good. Um, but one question I do have for you. April 1st, 2004. Uh, way back when, yep. When Gmail was released. Yep. Where were you and what were you doing? <laughs> all right, let me think. April 1st, 2004. That would have been just about when I was getting ready to start working uh, at a certain uh, technology school. That is true. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. And I was not one to jump on Gmail immediately. I jumped on it early, like the minute I was able, like someone else had um, been accepted. Right. Yep. He sent me yeah. an invite. Remember that exception, being accepted. That's right. Being accepted. Yeah. So I think this is mid to late 2004. 
early 2005 when I joined Gmail. Okay. I You know, I think I joined, it might have been about 06. It wasn't long into it. It might have been even, it had been 05 when I signed up for an account. But I didn't, you know what, yeah, I signed up for an account, but I didn't really use it. Because I had enough email accounts at the time, I so I thought, and I was very happy with you know what I had from my internet provider. I go back to that Gmail account and emails that I wrote back in 2004. Still in your send items. Still in my send items. Oh, I should go look at that. Clean out the inbox all the time. I don't know if I've cleaned out my send items. I'm that telling you, interesting. Yeah. I wrote a note, a scorcher. Uh oh. <laughs> to the mayor of the village of Hempstead. Uh-huh. Um, circa 2004, 2005. Uh-huh. About overcrowding. Okay. And he responded. Was this when you had the rowdy students living next door? This is when I had the rowdy students. Ah. <laughs> with the 10 bags of yes, garbage. All, yes, yes. And the cars lined up in the driveway. Cars and lined in front up of the, I remember those stories. You remember me flying off the chain. <laughs> yes. And here we are, 14 years later. And you still have some students living next door, but they're not as bad, right? No, they're, like, unbelievable. Good. You know, some things don't change. Um, back then, we were on our Blackberries. Yes, we were. This is pre-iPhone. That's right. This is pre-iPhone. We had BlackBerry ne- Nextel. We had the hotness. We had the Nextel Blackberry, Blackberries. Nextel Blackberries. Direct Connect and all. Yes. Silver Blackberries. Silver Blackberries. And no one else had them. No one else had them. Nope. In the entire nope. school. Nope, we did. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But you go back there and you look at technology. This is before the iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. This is this around was... iPod. This is yeah, iPod was around for sure. Nokia, okay. Nokia and Motorola were the hot phones. Yes. Um, yeah, like you said, no iPhones. See, no I mentioned phone. iPhone and and Siri starts talking. Uh, that's right. Let's do another one. Hey Siri, <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, those were those were those were good days. Oh my goodness, Gmail! Look how again, little did we know that was the beginning of. The Google's taking over the world in their attempted domination. Think about it. One billion Gmail G, Gmail users. And think about it. Each one of those emails is searched and indexed. And every message you've ever sent is yes. logged. Every query you've yes. ever searched is logged. And all that data they've sold. And made the billions and billions of dollars that they've made. Avengers Affinity War. Are we talking about it tonight? We can talk about it. But can't talk about it. Okay, I haven't. I know you've seen it. So, all right. So, on, on the cuff, no, no, right no, here no, now, no, 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 no. I'm not. Your I'm spoiler cut. free. No, review. no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I want I mean, you, you s- to see it. I can't. No spoiler get, review. No, nothing, we, can, okay. we can't. Is no spoiler. No way you can do a spoiler free review. I know it, it's. Yeah, I'm putting you in the spot here. Two minutes into the movie, there's a, there really there are spoilers. Okay, that's good. See, that's a good, there's a good spoiler free review right there. Two minutes. It, it starts. So, all right. Here, so I can ask this. Once it gets going, which sounds like it's like two minutes in, into the movie almost. The minute the lights come on. It's off and running. It's off and running. Nonstop. Nonstop. Two hours and 29 minutes. I've heard that it's for the Marvel aficionados. It's awesome. Yes. For the non-comic engendered people who are seeing it as an action movie it's good yes um uh it this one as being part one of two obviously has to create some questions to have a part two right to need the, a part two but it, it answers some questions that we have in and of itself the ending is going to have you with a wtf moment i've already got i've Seen that online. People saying that some people being a bit upset about the ending. Will will I be upset about the ending? You are gonna love the ending. Okay. See that then I you're that's going good. To stand Another there. spoiler free. There we you're go. You're gonna stand there and you're gonna be like, What just happened? <laughs> okay. The good. Post credit? 
Yes. Insane. Really? All right. I, I'll, I, I, I'll leave it there. I'll just say the biggest movie domestically, internationally, in its first weekend. So combine Black Panther with Infinity War yes. and that's a billion dollars. The, the amount weekend. of money that they are pulling in this year. Yes. And well last year because insane. And, and ridiculous. And it only gets better. Totally. We'll talk about Infinity Wars next week. Yes. Uh, yeah, I will see it this week. I okay. almost went to see it last night. Okay. But the seating, I just did not want to sit in the very, very, very front row. Of course. So I was like, no, nah, I will find a way to see it during the week. Okay. For sure. I think next week we'll just have a guest. Okay. We'll talk with a guest for about 8 to 12 minutes. Yes. And then the rest of it could just be Infinity Wars. You know, you have to coordinate to be on the, on the line with us. Mr. Todd G. Mr. Vandenberg. Todd, yes, you do. That's the man, Todd. I know you listen to us sometimes. If you're not listening right now, it's okay. But we want you to be on air next week. Yep. On air. Yep. Yes. What are your thoughts on the Wise Cam? That was introduced to me on Friday. It was introduced to me on Wednesday. The link was sent to me Wednesday. I had not seen the device. I saw the actual device. I saw it on Friday as well. I, I had ordered one on Wednesday, and I have to con check because I did not receive a confirmation um, that it was shipped. So I've got to go online and look at that. Um, for for those that don't know what we're talking about, there is uh, from www.wisecam, that's W-Y-Z-E-C-A-M.com, a very small, very affordable webcam. Or so you can use it as a security cam. Uh, when I say affordable, I'm talking twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. The thing is, maybe a two inch by not inch and a half by inch and a half inch cube has its own stand. Um, is mag well, is magnetic, so you can sit it right side up, upside down. It raises, it swivels. It broadcasts in gorgeous 1080 uh, over it. You know, has its own app, um, and it, you can you can s it sends and receives audio. So yes. you can have this thing like watching your door. It'll send you an alert if it detects motion. Right. Uh, Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Rich, I'm gonna do one even better. I order two. Yep. My current um, alarm provider. Yes. The camera that they're charging me for? Not any more than that. I'm going to remove that off the contract mm -hmm. and install both of those. Makes cameras. total sense. Makes total sense. I mean, this thing, uh, if wh whichever of us receives it first and gets it, we need to contact the, these guys and oh, yeah. get them on the air. Oh, definitely. Um, because, yeah, I only ordered one because like, I hadn't even seen it yet. Like I said, I was just it was mentioned. And I said, all right, this sounds good. Um, I'm probably I will definitely order another one, and I can see maybe a third. But what I'm kind of holding out for mm -hmm. is you know with the success and how good this one looks, I want to see what they do with an outdoor version. Okay, that's what will be the killer if they if they can come out with an outdoor version. Oh yeah, and the indoor version also has um, night lighting, so you know if night infrared type available. night vision, it's there. So, you know, give me something that's waterproof that I can stick, you know, outside the house in a corner someplace, and it's a winner. And it can be $30, <laughs> you know, done. So, so here's the deal. Did you order from the website, or did you order from the Amazon? I ordered from their website, but paid through Amazon. Okay. So, hmm. I ordered directly through Amazon. Hmm. It removed the shipping cost. Yeah, I was I wasn't getting a shipping charge either. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I got a date. Oh no, I take that back. I was five dollars, six dollars. Yeah. I got. So it's the same price, right? Regardless, right? Um, whether you go through the website, you go through their website, it's twenty dollars. Yep. With a nine dollar shipping charge. Right. Okay. For two. Or you go through Amazon, mm -hmm. and since we're all Prime members, mm -hmm. and Prime, and yeah, two Prime, days and Prime is going up 
another twenty dollars. Another twenty bucks. So you got a hundred million subscribers, mm-hmm. and you're charging that hundred million subscribers an additional twenty bucks. Mm-hmm. Do the math. Yep. How do you write yourself a check? <laughs> I don't know. Just like that. Um. I, hey, on the on the camera, the wise camera. Yeah. I was told May third through May tenth. The delivery date. date. Okay. I'll go online and just uh, check my status. And again, I'll, I'm I'm going to order two anyway. I'm sure. So I might just go on there and just order another one. Um, probably directly just through Amazon and see what happens with the first one and play it by ear. You sent me something this past week, um, and I thought it was a myth. It was a monolith. <laughs> the iPhone SE 2. Ted's favorite phone. Oh, my goodness. And you had said not long ago, they're due to, to come out with another one. They do. Because they had been. I think it was two years old, three years old. Lost, I lost yes. track of time. It's over. So if you look at the Apple's model yep. every year. Yeah. 380 days or so. Yep. This model hasn't been upgraded in... It was it was the 5 series, right? Yes. Jeez. So that's got to be three years. It's yeah. three years. Yeah. So we're close to around about 950 to 1,000 days. It's well paid for. <laughs> totally. <laughs> you think? No one's got a subscription where they're still paying for their, their iPhone SE. Oh, my goodness. So you might get an SE, too. That'd be nice. That would be awesome. Because you know what always happens to me? Whenever I'm at the the point of the new model is about to come out, um, I go to our provider who provides us our our mobile phones. Yes. And I usually just say, ah, just give me this one. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks later. Here comes the one you wanted. Here comes the one I wanted. Well, I'm kind of holding out now, so I'm still... For my personal phone, mm-hmm. still on my Samsung Galaxy 6. Okay. S6. Great phone. The battery is just starting to, starting to show its age. Okay. It's still good for a full day. Okay. So, you know, I charge it every night anyway. So, uh, it's it's okay. But I'm starting to get that, you know, I, I'm not thinking about a new phone for the personal phone. Okay. Uh, will, will I ever be both iPhone? No. <laughs> I don't blame you. No. I don't blame you. I but, can never see you doing that. Uh, Galaxy S8, which, I mean, if I can hold out for S9, whatever it'll be when it comes out, that might be my next phone. Or, I mean, I'm starting to look at some of the other vendors, too, and see what their offerings are. Okay. But I still, I, I still, for me, you know, calls calls are calls. I think the most important feature for me on the phone is actually the camera. And I still have to hand it to Samsung. Because the pictures I'll take with that two-year-old mm-hmm. S6 come out looking better than new iPhones half the time. People mm-hmm. and people say, I can tell that's a Samsung picture because that thing just looks too good. So that's that's where I'm sticking. But you know, right now I've got I'm still paying off a phone for for son three and wife one. <laughs> <laughs> So, still paying off phones for them on these, you know, the 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 non glory days of paying for your own phone completely and no right. subsidies. So we'll see. I'm just holding it out. I will tell you, as we close this this mobile phone segment, um, I bought my daughter that iPhone 10. Yes, and I'm seeing all these notes and all these articles come up about. Well, you can get it at half the price now. Yeah. It just burns you. It happened to you again. You should have waited. She just waited. Should have just waited. Well, you know, they are I've been hearing little things here and there, you know, iPhone X sales are not what nearly what they wanted them to be nope. or thought it would be. Um, so maybe yeah, they realized cut those prices down. But and see it didn't make sense to me when it happened. The release in eight and the X basically at the same time. Uh, no, because one undercut the other one. Right. Right, it's either you want, you know, do like you normally would have done an 8 Plus or something like that, make it the big bad phone, and wait two years and call something the iPhone X, iPhone X, whatever. 
The problem is there's too many models. Right. There's too many models. Mm-hmm. And that just muddies the waters even more. So now you can have pluses and S's and SEs. Uh, just, yeah. just give me a phone. <laughs> and we're in our final segment, uh, Late Night Parents. Best ways to follow the show, LateNightParents.com. Rich, I will say, not Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Rich, I had to wipe my dad's laptop yet again. Uh, wait, wait, hold it. Okay. I've lost track of how many times you've had to wipe Dad's laptop. So, so tell me you have like an image saved so that when it comes time, it's just the only external hard drive. Boop, boop. Here it is. Twenty minutes later, here's your laptop back, Dad. It's to a point where I had hand him yes a DVD <laughs> with an ISO on it. Yes, and I said, just pop it in. Just pop know. it in. Boop. So, I think, hmm, how do I attack this? I attack it this way. Uh-huh. You know how you talk with your folks and they say, hey, I was just talking with you, on, uh, you know, on the phone, and then I went to Facebook, and then I'm seeing... Uh-huh pictures and yada 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 and Uh, all this other stuff yes so is facebook listening or is it the pixels and everything else and i you you really don't want to believe that facebook is listening it's got to be image recognition it can't be from phone calls that's just got to be coincidence where you searched for something and talked about it in the phone call so from the search it's coming up i think it's from well it's definitely from the browser yeah it's definitely yeah. from all of these websites and facebook and right. twitter they're all doing the same they're all thing. doing the same thing and all you have to do is click on an ad that looks like oh i might be interested in that and you're guaranteed you're going to see it come across your facebook feed your google feed it's going to be an ad. It, you're going to see it five or six different locations. Just click on it one time. You know what I think the problem is? I think when he's entering a website. Right. And nowadays you have so many bogus websites out there. Right. Fake news. And something is always getting pushed to his machine. Uh, and it's just like, ba-boom. Hmm. But we're at the point where the one good thing is, I'm like, did you save anything? Right. No. So these these bookmarks that I have here saved. That's all he cares that, about. That's all you care about, right? Yep. Deep freeze. Or that ISO. Or that. <laughs> I this. stopped by there or, last night. Or Chromebook or something else. Yes. That's probably the best the best thing right there. Because all he wants to do is browse the web, right? All he wants to do is browse the web. And get to his email from the web. That's it. Dad's not even writing Word documents or anything like that nope. these days. I said to him, I said, uh, you want me to put Word on here? He was like, nah, not really. I said, he was like, I That's just want to just a little bit of Yahoo. Chromebook. Yeah. Mm. That'll be that'll be the, the answer, I think, for you. I got to tell you, the amount of spyware and adware, and he's on... A website, mm-hmm. and you know the page keeps come to, coming up. Right. You're the one thousandth person. Yes. Or hey, you have a virus. Call this number. Call this. <laughs> oh, oh, and he called dad. the number. And he called no. Oh. And they said, "Okay, gladly." We'll Thirty nine dollars. Just, just give us your card. Give us your credit card. And we'll virtually swipe it. Ah. Oh. And we're gonna upgrade it to Windows ten. Yes. And I'm like giving him that look. <laughs> you didn't do that, did you? And he was like, "No." Okay, way to go, no, Dad. Good Dad. I decided to give you a call. Good Dad. Called him before he even gave him the credit card. Oh my goodness. You know, but you gotta. It, it, it's it's a shame that you have to even think about it. But how many people out there that do click that link? Yeah. Submit that credit card. Mm-hmm. Let these people connect in, and. 
you know, claim to be cleaning things out when they're just adding more crap on your machine in the first place. That's all they or they're clean, you know, so that they can't be held accountable for saying they did nothing. They will go through and do the standard registry clean that anyone with any knowledge can do. And be like, okay, we've cleaned your machine and we're going to leave this thing running on it, you know, so that it'll watch and it'll let us know and we're going to give you maintenance forever for another $79 a year. Right. Uh, but they make money doing this. Oh, they do. You know, but yeah, like, like you said, it's the you know everything that's out there it is just too easy to click on the wrong thing if you're not paying some attention they make them look good they do and you know depends on the sure some some websites may be more susceptible than others depends where you go you have to be careful as far as that too but like like anything else if it looks too good to be true it probably is don't click it don't look at it you, you get that email. I mean, you and I both know. Tis the season for for emails to yeah. be to be sent around. Um, you know, if it, IRS, it, IRS, some kind of PDF, it. someone wants you to virtually sign this document. No, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Don't do it because then you'll find out that you are now infected, and everyone in your address book is sending out emails. Um, be careful what you click on, please. Rich, can social media replace your website? No, I don't. I don't think we're anywhere near that. I mean, granted, social media is a way to. I, I see it as you know, especially for us, social media is a way to advertise. It's a way to get your information out there. It's the way that you make yourself known. But I still think you need a website as the the source location, as the home location, if you will, where you post it all where it's archived, where you brought, you know, where you send more information out of. Your social media should link back to your webpage. Gotcha. My gotcha. opinion. I agree with you. I agree with you. I just think when it comes to dealing with Google, it likes to index everything. Everything. <laughs> but per se, your website. Right. More than hey, let me just put up a quick post. Right, right. That post will get indexed, and if someone searches and knows the right thing to search for, it may show up in there. But if it if that post you did was linked back to your website, it's going to get picked up or has much more a much better chance that it's picked up for by, by the Google algorithms and when the people search for it. That plus other things will come up. Have you noticed in your email that you've received – Multiple terms of service emails in your inbox lately. Everyone's trying to cover themselves again. Again. General data protection regulation. Thank you, Europe. Thank you, EU. (laughs) May 25, or excuse me, May 25th. It kicks into high gear. If I say, hey, I want something scrubbed. Right. You got to scrub it. You got to scrub it. Hey, if my data has just been out there, you got to tell me. Yep. All good things. All good things. You know, this it's it's not bad. I mean, it's I'm it, you know, it's I've always wondered why it ends up that you know, it seems like the European Union is a little more stricter on these things uh than the US for some reason. Yeah. You know, um but it, it's a good thing. I mean, yeah, if your data's out there and and a company is holding it or has provided it or uh, made it available out there and you want them to pull it back or at least let you know where it is. You have every right. It's your information. They shouldn't be able. No one should be able to just be able to distribute it, make it available without your knowledge. Windows 10, April 28, 18 update. Yep, no, they're not calling it the Spring Creator. Not calling it the Creators update. They're calling it the Spring 18 update now. Right. Getting away from the name, something like that. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I've got to say, Windows 10. Has been very, very good to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, happy, happiest with Windows 10 in general since um, 90. Heck, 98 was a big one, but definitely since Windows 7. Okay. Windows 10, you know, it seems like they're finally, they've gone out after some of the Apple style model. Yes. You know, gone are the days of, the, of you know, updates just hitting you. All the time. That was the biggest complaint, which for, for whatever reason, people always, you know, ignored that Apple sends just as many updates. Oh, they, they have to, you know, not complaining about that at all. It's just they were a lot less intrusive, it seems, when it came through Apple versus how Microsoft used to do it. 
But, you know, they've got a handle on it now. Let's give you major updates, features. Sounds like they're, you know, paying attention to what consumers want. Looking at looking at the, the OS, um, you know, design-wise, everything looks good. I, I looked over the features that are coming down the road. Can't tell you off the top of my head what they were. They weren't they weren't all that important to me. Some of the things okay. I read, um, but I, I'm looking forward to it. It's just a matter of now. Be ready for your machine to receive an update. Uh, like I always have said, and will always continue to say, make sure you have your Windows Windows updates on active. Uh, go into your Windows Update settings. At least set them so that they they pull down or it'll install on the time when you don't think you'll be using your machine. Your machine at least, right. um, you know, network administrators, those in smaller environments that might not be running, you know, SUS server and distributing them locally through their own servers. Yeah, be ready for your machines to be pulling these down. Um, but yeah, it's I, I can knock on wood. I don't think. Um, Myself and in my own clients, or I've seen anyone have a, a hard failure after or during one of the major Windows 10 updates. Okay. Which is a good thing. Ways to get in contact with you? I am still Late Night Rich. And I am the Real Ted Hicks, and we are out. Everyone, thanks for listening. Have a great week. <laughs>